Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Studio Arts and Glass, Genuine Appraisals and Liquidations, who are having a tag sale right now. Uh, today, Brad and I are broadcasting from our administrative offices, and our special guest is Dr. Natalie Lascala, podiatrist with the Altman Medical Group Podiatry and Altman Wound Care. Good morning, Dr. Lascala, and welcome back to the show. Good morning. Hi. Okay, when wounds don't heal or are in a painful or are painful despite treatment, it's time to see a specialist. If a qualified provider who deals with non-healing wounds is your best resource for questions about potential infection from a wound that isn't healing properly, it's time to see a specialist. At a wound care center, the wound will be measured and examined, and blood flow to the wound will be checked to determine why the wound isn't healing. The wound will be cleaned and any dead skin and tissue will be removed to promote healing. Then the wound will be dressed to prevent infection and a treatment plan will be established. This morning, we're gonna talk with Dr. Lascola about all the aspects of wound care. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our program is also available on our podcast. You can download that in the app store on your favorite smartphone app. Just look for Medicine Center Pharmacy with Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and please subscribe. So Dr. Lascola, Welcome back to the show again. I think you've been on before. Mm -hmm. um, please introduce yourself again and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your practice. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Natalie Lascola. I have been practicing here at Altman for 10 years, and my office is located in North Canton at the Altman Medical Group. And I'm also here half time and part time. I'm at the Altman Hospital at the Wound Center. So that's where I see my patients either in the office or at the Wound Center. So you have been a guest on the program in the past to talk about foot care, but today we're going to talk about uh, wound care. Um, is that correct? Correct. Okay. We do a lot of generalized foot treatment, foot ankle problems here at the office, but when you have a chronic wound that needs special attention, I usually will refer all my patients over to the wound center and continue their treatment there. So I understand you're in North Canton. Is that correct? Your office? Correct. correct. At the Altman Medical Group. And do you only practice there or also at the hospital? Also at the hospital. Okay. Part-time I'm here and part-time I'm there. I'm at the wound center Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. So what are the, some of the reasons that people would need to receive care in a wound center? There's many reasons, but if you have a hard to heal wound, there's care of pressure ulcers, diabetic ulcers. There's different types of wounds that develop when you have venous or arterial problems. There's a lot of different types of chronic wounds that can occur that simply need help to heal. You're up, Brad. All right, so let's talk about non-healing wounds. You know, we get patients in the pharmacy that come in and, you know, oftentimes they're a patient with diabetes, which I'm sure you're gonna talk about. But, um, you know, I think some of us take for granted that you cut or scrape yourself and, you know, you put a Band-Aid on, maybe you put some Neosporin on and you think, okay, you know, it'll be fine in a couple of days. Well, what happens when it's not? What do you, how do you approach a non-healing wound? What, what is the first thing that is a characteristic of a non-healing wound? Typically a non-healing wound is one that has been there for longer than four weeks. There's a lot of discrepancy of whether or not when the timeline makes somebody a non-healing wound versus a chronic wound, just, but there's a lot of different factors that come into play. How deep is the wound? How large is the wound? Where is the wound located? What type of underlying medical conditions do you have? Do you have diabetes? Do you have circulation impairment? Was it a result of trauma? Did you have a crush injury? Do you have a burn? Do you have frostbite? It all depends on what type of trauma the person the place, everything that comes into play. So it's hard to say whether a chronic wound is going to be treated at two weeks or six weeks. It just, if your wound is not progressing in a typical fashion or it's deteriorating rather than getting better, you need to seek care. Hmm. So how about in respect to seeking care, why is it important to go to a wound center for a non-healing wound? Well, typically a lot of the wound centers we get a lot of patients that will come in with contradicting information. They'll say, I'm leaving it open to air, or I'm leaving it this, I'm soaking it, I'm doing that. There's a lot of different things on Google that will tell you what to do, but 
you're going to have at the wound center, we're going to create the best chance for that chronic wound to heal. We're going to try to make the perfect environment and give you all the, the exact recipe of what you need to get it to heal as quick as possible. Okay. So I've heard that people often wait too long before seeking care at a wound center. How would you respond to that? And what advice can you give to someone who maybe they're advised to seek care from a wound center, but maybe they're reluctant because they feel that they don't need that? Well, that's probably true for every medical condition. A lot of people are hesitant to seek care just because they just have the hope that, oh, it's going to go away. But typically, it's waiting too long is going to make your wound care process that much longer. It's, I always tell my patients, it's much easier for me to heal a small wound than a large wound. It's much faster to heal the smaller wounds that are less complicated than it is a large one that's been lingering for months. So typically it's more of a time frame. like how quickly do you want this to go away? We're going to make this as fast as possible if you call. So the sooner you call, the better. So this is a very unfair question because you mentioned a variety of wound consequences, I guess is probably not the right way to characterize it, but whether it's a burn or a crush or a, an injury, what, by the time someone needs a specialist like yourself, what's a garden variety expectation of a wound healing, like the time it would take it to heal? Well, a typical wound should heal within four weeks. But like I said, it is an unfair question because I, when people ask me that, I say, give me a crystal ball because I don't know. There's gonna be so many things that come into play. We have had patients come into the wound center with a very severe wound and they're out in two weeks and they're healed. We've had patients that have been there for two months. We have some patients with chronic conditions that are in and out with reopening wounds for a course of two years. So it's all patient Gosh. and it's all different. Hmm. But it just, it honestly just depends on what's all going on medically with your body. What's, what's diabetes play in this uh, scenario? Why does it take longer for a diabetic wound to heal? A lot of diabetic patients, there's multiple issues that come into play. Diabetic patients can have arterial disease, meaning they don't have enough blood flow to heal the wound. Diabetics can have what's called neuropathy, meaning they don't feel it, so they don't feel pain, so it delays them seeking care. And it, it stops them from staying off of their foot where if I had a wound that was painful, I wouldn't walk on it because it would hurt too badly. If you have neuropathy, you don't have that pain response that's stopping you from walking and ambulating on it. Diabetic patients, if your blood sugar is not well controlled, you can't create a perfect environment for healing. You get stuck in infl inflammation and you don't create the healing process to get rid of your wound. So there's a lot of aspects that come into play with a diabetic. There's a lot of stuff working against them to stop that wound from healing. Do I, do I need a, a referral to see you? No, actually a lot of people think they do, but you can literally just call the wound center and say, I have a wound. It's been here for X amount of days. I'm concerned about it and we'll schedule you. So are, are you the only physician or the only person at the, at the wound care center, or do you have a staff of? providers there's a actually a large mix of providers we have nurses we have hyperbaric technicians that provide care at the center we have podiatrists internal medicine doctors plastic surgeons nurse practitioners everybody comes into play to see those patients for the initial consult we have registered nurses lpns that provide care alongside the physicians with each visit and if you are a patient that is going to be receiving hyperbaric oxygen, which I believe we'll talk about that in a little bit, there is a certified hyperbaric technician that's going to help with that treatment as well. So, so there's, a, if, there's a lot of people there. Okay, that will so if I, if, if I make a request to see you, will you see me? Oh, yes. You can say, I want to see Dr. Lascola or I want to see okay. X, Y, and Z. And we'll work to get you onto that schedule. Now, there has been cases where if I'm full, or if I am out for that day, we all cover each other. So there's always somebody there to provide care for you. You can request whoever you want, but it may be quicker to get into another provider if you want a specific day or if you want a, a specific time. But we work around that. But yes, you are more than welcome to request a specific physician. Okay. 
So how about this? You know, we talked about uh, patient reluctance to seek care when they need it. Can you give the listeners maybe a basic expectation or a, a paint, uh, paint an image of what a first visit might look like? And, and maybe that can allay some fears about being intimidated by making that call. Okay. A lot of times your first visit at the wound center is going to be your longest visit because they take a very thorough history and a complete evaluation of the effective area, the wounds, everything you can possibly think of. They're going to ask you those questions about your medical background. Most treatments will begin that very first day, such as wound care treatments. If you come in that very first day, we're going to start treating your wound. Other treatments such as hyperbaric oxygen therapy or skin grafting or skin substitutes, those need prior authorization through insurances. So those won't start on the very first day, but we may make mention of them and begin that process of getting them verified and certified so you can have that therapy. But we may order labs, we may order blood works, we may order x-rays, anything that will aid in treating your wound that first visit. We may So you may leave there with a lot of some blood work to do, some x-rays to get, but you're going to have a plan from that very first day. Why don't we go ahead and take our break, Ted? Okay. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Uh, you need to remember the flu vaccine along with Moderna and Janssen COVID vaccine are available. Please stop by any of our Medicine Center pharmacies to get vaccinated. No appointment is necessary. All right. Before the break, we were talking about uh, when and what to expect when you see your first wound, first wound care visit. And, uh, you know, we appreciate uh, Dr. Lascola taking time out of her busy schedule today to join us and, and help patients that maybe need some wound care that haven't uh, made that jump yet. Think about doing that. So you mentioned um, what a first visit would look like and that you'd have a plan of action and some homework to do after it. How about... Um, how about follow-up visits and follow-up care and what can patients expect as their journey to getting their wound healing? Typically with wound care, we see you once a week. The importance of once a week is not only for debridement purposes, but it's wound care is ever-changing. So if I change one dressing one week and then the next week and it comes in and your wound is dried out, we need to see that change so we can then change your dressing plan. So things change and evolve well, as the wound is healing and the wound is changing. So it's important to see you weekly so we can address each change as we see it and make sure that you have the proper care that's coming each week. So sometimes people hate coming weekly, but it's very important as you, as you heal faster. Sure. I can see that there's a lot of milestones and it would be valuable to kind of check in, if you will, once a week mm -hmm. and see, are we making progress? Are we stagnant? Or are we kind of, you know, exactly regressing, if you will. Um, okay. So, um, you know, we hear a, a word a lot in the pharmacy, but I don't think people understand it. And it's kind of a scary word. Can you talk about debridement, what it is and why it's useful in wound care? It, debridement is probably the least favorite part of your visit for all patients. It's honestly the most helpful for us as physicians to get the wound to heal. Debridement is honestly cleaning up of the dead tissue and removing all the devitalized tissue as well as the bacterial load inside that wound bed. Now, some patients, it's completely symptom-free. It doesn't hurt. It's not painful. Some patients' wounds are very, very sensitive. Now, to ease somebody's fears, we do put topical numbing agents on the wound bed and allow it to sit there. So we do numb up the area prior to cleaning up the wound bed. But it's very important because it decreases bacterial load and it helps the body remind it that there's a wound, that there's something there. Because once a wound is chronic, your body kind of gets stuck and walls it off as normal and it stops trying to heal that wound. And when we clean the wound up, we also reactivate the wound and remind your body, hey, there's a problem here, we need to fix this. So it's probably the least favorite part, but it's very, very important. So when debridement, we're looking at possibly scraping the wound or? We, you know. we can, it, sometimes it's scraping the wound. Sometimes we use a blade, sometimes it's, 
most of the time it's, it's what it's called a dermal curette and you scrape and you just remove the top layer of the wound. Most of the time when you look down at the wound and you see the scab or the wet dead tissue, that needs to come off. That's never going to turn into skin and that's only going to delay your healing. So the sooner we can get that off, the sooner you, we can promote healthy tissue by removoving the, the bad tissue. Okay, well, this, so, this, this sounds to me like it's a shade painful. <laughs> it, it can't. That's exactly why we have to numb the area. Now, some sure. patients, it doesn't hurt because just like removing a callus or trimming your fingernails or trimming your hair, there's no pain fibers in that dead tissue. Hmm, but it's the okay. tissue underneath that's still living that when sometimes pulling it away from that, it can be tender. But sometimes it doesn't hurt at all. So... I don't want somebody to be apprehensive about it, but I do tell patients that sometimes it does burn and it's irritating, but it, it's pain with a purpose. So what about hyperbaric oxy oxygen treatment and, and what diagnosis is it used for? Okay, pain or hyperbaric oxygen, it's a chamber where the air pressure is increased to over normal up to three times. So you're actually in a chamber, laying in this chamber. And what it does is it increases the oxygen in the lungs. It pushes more oxygen into those tissues so that it can help you, you heal because that's one of the most vital parts of having a wound healing is oxygen. So being in this chamber, you're breathing high concentrated oxygen. It's pushing it into your lungs, pushes it into the tissues, into the wound bed to help it heal. So there's a lot of different ways and reasons that we use the hyperbaric chamber. It's bone infection, which is called osteomyelitis, non-healing skin grafts or flaps. If you've had surgery and your looks like your flap might not be taking or it's having trouble getting blood, we can put you in the chamber and it can help reperfuse that graft. We can do it for radiation injuries, soft tissue injuries, diabetic wounds, gangrene, frostbite. There's a lot of different treatments that this benefits. When I first heard of this treatment, I thought, okay, if I got a, a sore in my hand, my hand just goes in the chamber, but nope. that's not the case. The whole body goes into the chamber. Mm -hmm. nope. <laughs> you can't just put your arm in. You need to breathe in the oxygen to get yeah. it into your lungs, then get it into your bloodstream, and then the oxygen can be delivered to the extremity or the wound, wherever it's at. But you must be in the chamber. And I, I'm, so, sure that, I'm sure the time in the chamber varies. What's a typical <clears throat> chamber time? When you may be actually in the chamber for one hour, but you may be at the wound center for two hours because we get you there. We have to get you set up. They take your vitals. They take you pre-vitals into the dive. They monitor you during the dive and then after the dive. So you may be at the wound center about two, two and a half hours every time that you have a dive. You know, I had some experience years ago with a good friend that had a business here on West Tuscan, and he had uh, oral cancer and um, was treated with radiation. And then a dentist pulled one of his teeth, which really caused a ruckus um, and had to go to hyperbaric oxygen. This mm -hmm. was a long, this was a long time ago. And they were using the old iron lungs mm -hmm. uh, from polio days as a start when they started in, into this treatment. Are, are, are there chambers made now more efficient uh, for they're much more efficient they're much safer there you can control the depth of the dive and the pressure of the dive much easier we as the patient is in the chamber they can some just sleep and take a nap some you can watch tv there's music there's you can pick your you can pick bring in your own music. There's a lot of different things. There's a phone inside the chamber that if you want to talk to anybody outside the chamber, that you can pick up the phone and speak to them. Now you can hear each other through the glass, but it's just like yes. that. You're talking through glass. So there's a phone that you can speak to somebody kind of like a walkie talkie to keep you comfortable. But a lot of patients just relax and take a nap. How many chambers does Altman have? Mm -hmm. How Very many? We have two. We have two. Okay. 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 It's about in the hour. Time for the news. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Okay. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. We are talking with Dr. Natalie Lascola with Altman Wound Care. I have a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Did we finish this hyperbaric subject? Um, Pretty much. I think so. Okay. Is it like a, an MRI? I mean, 
I've had an MRI and it's not real comfortable in it. <laughs> it's actually a, it's the chamber itself is a glass chamber. So imagine a very large glass tube that a actual hospital bed fits into and oh. you slide in. So you're laying in a bed while you're in the chamber. Now the chamber does shut, the door shuts. So if one issue that we do run into with some of our patients is they have claustrophobia. That is something yeah. they have to be able to be comfortable enough to be inside this chamber with the door closed. Now the chamber is completely glass all the way around. So you can see 360 around you. It's just, it's a physical chamber that you are inside. So an MRI is very noisy inside. Is that the case with the oxygen chamber? No, the oxygen chamber is actually very quiet. You, if okay. anything, you may hear just some pushing of air, just like a, 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 a very slight hiss or a sound of air moving, but you're, you can watch TV, you can listen to music and it's not nothing that you can't be comfortable. Like I said, most people sleep. Sure. So I think um, we covered a typical length of, uh, is there a longer term for certain things or you said like an hour or something, I think? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, most dives, that's, most dives last typically about an hour. Now, dives can be cut short if patient's uncomfortable, if patient wants, if they have to use the bathroom, if they are having some issues, we can always bring them out earlier, but usually they're about an hour and you will prescribe maybe 30 dives consecutively and we'll dive until you're healed. Now at the end of the dives, if you're still not healed, some patients need more, some patients need less. Again, that's gonna be a patient-based discrepancy. How do insurance companies look at this? I mean, in a sense, I, I kind of look at that as sort of voodoo medicine or something. I mean, I, I can't believe that some of the insurance companies, ah, we're not doing that anymore. We're not gonna pay for that or whatever. Well, a lot, believe it or not, it's actually very cut and dry. If you have the specific diagnoses that are covered for hyperbaric oxygen therapy that are proven to be effective, then yes, your insurance will cover this. Okay. So how about, what is total contact casting and how does it help with diabetic foot disease? Okay. Total contact casting. It's been described and taught to medical students for years as the gold standard for any wound on the bottom of the foot, any plantar foot ulceration. What it does is you are placed in a cast, a physical cast that you are able to walk in and it distributes the pressure evenly across the plantar like a, foot. Like a plaster cast? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Huh. An actual cast, but it's an, it's an ambulatory cast. So you may walk in it. We put you in a boot that straps over top of the cast. So you're able to walk, but it helps aid in decreasing the pressure on the bottom of the foot so you can heal. It's probably the only way that we can keep somebody weight bearing with a plantar wound and get it to heal. Otherwise, you must be non-weight bearing, either a wheelchair or crutches, because any wound that has pressure on it, it will delay healing or prevent it or worsen it. Interesting. So it's, we're, all, we're fighting a lot, a lot of pressure on the bottom of the foot. Well, even if you're not a diabetic, the total contact cast is going to help if you have a wound on the bottom plantar surface of your foot. Some patients may be perfectly healthy and have nothing wrong. They may have had trauma to the bottom of their foot. And if it's on a weight bearing spot that you walk on every day, every step is going to prevent healing. So putting them in a cast for several weeks can greatly decrease the size of the wound and pr promote healing. Would you say that leg, uh, foot leg ulcers um, are more prominent in uh, insulin-dependent diabetics or both categories? Both categories. Both categories. Everybody, everybody's different, and it, it's going to be what other comorbidities do you have along with your diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2. Do you have the things we talked about before, arterial disease or neuropathy. And that all boils down to most of the time is your glycemic control. How well controlled is your blood sugars? If your blood sugars are well controlled, that's going to be your best way to prevent all those secondary negative issues. problems yeah, okay. and issues that you have with diabetes, whether you're type one or type two, that doesn't matter. Interesting. So tight control your blood sugars is what we really drive home for any diabetic mm -hmm. patient. 
Interesting. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, our friends at the radio station are having some trouble, so we're just going to persevere because it's more fun talking to you than listening to commercials. Okay. So, um, you know, let's talk about what's a total contact cast and can you walk on it? Yes. Well, what we were just talking about before is a total contact cast. It distributes the pressure evenly across the foot and it's for plantar foot wounds. You're not going to get a total contact cast if you have a wound on your calf or your leg. It's going to be on the bottom of your foot whether it's the heel or the toe, doesn't matter. But if it's on a plantar surface of the foot and we need to remove pressure, this is the best way for us to do that consistently throughout the week. You get a cast placed on weekly. You come to the wound center, we'll remove your cast, we'll clean your wound, we'll provide debridement if necessary, wound care, we'll dress the wound with specific wound care products to create a specific wound environment that's promoting healing. And then we'll reapply the cast. And that cast gets removed and reapplied every week until you're healed. So and we're yes, not talking. We're not. We're not talking about the plaster cast that everyone's thinking of when you break an arm or leg, right? Yeah. We're talking about something that's. It, it, it's very. It's very quick. Actually, these casts are made out of acrylic, not plaster. Oh, okay. They do get hard, just like a cast that would be plaster. You broke your arm. They yes. are just like that, but. What we use is the total contact cast. It's called the total contact cast easy system. And it is a rolled, it almost looks like a sock. And we roll it onto your foot after we wet it with water and it activates it and it hardens and it becomes a cast. The cast has to be removed with a cast saw just as you would if you broke your arm mm. or your leg. Okay. It has to be removed that way. You can't cut it with scissors. It's something that has to be removed with a saw. And it creates a cast, but it's very, very quick. It streamlines the process. So that way patients can be in and out very quickly with, because otherwise removing a cast, treating a wound and reapplying a cast is very timely, but not with this system. It's very, very quick for all. So of I, okay. So I'm thinking about like a walking boot. So they're two different things. It is, it looks very similar, but it is definitely two different things. We put the total contact cast on the affected limb and then the, the walking boot is on there anytime you're walking on that cast. So it's okay to walk on the total contact cast, but only while you're in the boot. You can take it off to sleep, but you know rules apply. You can't get it wet. You can't, so showering is no, unless you wear the cast protector. So it must stay clean and dry. And while you're walking, you're in the boot. The only limitation that most people hate is that the wounds on your right foot can't drive. So that's yeah, that'd that, be a that problem. One, yeah, that one <laughs> that one throws throws a little bit of it a glitch in the plans. But if it's your left one, we don't worry about that. But you do have to have somebody help you out with rides and transportation if it's on the right limb. Well, I, I, I'm thinking, okay, you're putting a cast on over this wound, and, and it's rubbing the wound, right? I mean, and is that not true? Or nope. Before the cast is even applied, the dressing that I talked about that will create a wound care environment. It's padded, it's very heavily padded with foam and actually the wound itself is padded and there's a perimeter of pads around the wound to take all the pressure off of the wound. So there's multiple layers between the cast and the skin and multiple layers of padding and most, there, it's advanced foam that's there to absorb pressure. Okay, so we don't have any shifting of this cast then uh, over the over the wound. It's pretty well the, the mobile, uh, immobile, right? Yes, the, the cast is is actually molded to the shape of your foot or your leg. We don't want a lot of shift. We don't want a lot of motion. Actually, when you get your first cast on, we bring you back in 48 hours to, just to make sure that you're tolerating, make sure that there isn't any of those things that you're discussing, any shift or irritation or rubbing. Because with any dressing, we, we want to make sure that what we're doing is not causing another problem so we'll, the first cast that you would get we put it on and bring you back in 48 hours and we check everything out we just take it off and look and then we redo it so a lot of a lot of monitoring that goes into wound care because things change and we want to make sure we catch it I broke my ankle years ago and all i could remember doing was sticking a coat hanger down there to itch my leg yeah we <laughs> advise it, we advise against that <laughs> okay all right Oh, All right, well, let's, let's talk about skin substitutes because it sounds like it's something out of Star Trek, but I know it's something that you have at your disposal as one of your tools to help people get a wound to heal. Can you talk about skin substitutes and, and what they are and how they work? 
Yes, skin substitutes or otherwise known as skin grafting techniques are utilized very, very regularly at the wound center. There are multiple brands, multiple types of skin substitutes and skin grafting, but point being is there are many that are, they're not coming from your own body. So they're donated, whether they're from a cadaver or whether they're from other types of tissues that are utilized to create skin grafts. The purpose of this graft is to speed healing. So a lot of these grafts, we get them pre-approved and pre-certified prior to pre prior to placing them onto the patient. And it goes on directly at the wound center. You don't have to go to the emergency room or the OR, or there's no specific other steps. We do it at the wound center, we apply it. It's typically pain-free. The only part that is uncomfortable is potentially if you have the wound debrided or debridement before the graft is placed, but we place it at the wound center itself. And most patients do very, very well with them. Now there are grafts that we can take called auto, auto grafts, meaning from the patient themselves, but then sometimes we're dealing with the graft site and the wound itself. So having the skin substitutes or donated skin grafts that eliminates the donor site injury to the patient. So a lot of times that's very beneficial for these patients that are already having a hard time healing wounds in the first place. So we do our best to avoid creating another wound. So these are great options for the, our patients with chronic wounds. Did I miss this or, or did you explain what these uh, skin substitutes are? Well, they're human skin. They're from okay. cadavers. So, and they're so, so, okay, so it's not a substitute or, or a synthetic it's a, product. Nope, it's a skin graft. Okay. Now we do have other agents such as collagen dressings and collagen graftings that are created in a lab that are helping okay. promote wounds, but we have cat, cadaver skin graft, actual human skin hmm. to be placed. You cover so we, that up. You cover that up with a cast, huh? Um, a lot of times we don't put cast on those, but you okay. can. Okay. Gosh. All right. Where mm -hmm. are we at, Brad? Go ahead. <laughs> well, no, I just I'm thinking. Okay, so you know you've got all these amazing tools. I'm just trying to think about what do, what do some patients do it while they're in between visits. So whether you've got one of your your fancy casts on, maybe you've had a skin graft or maybe you haven't. How do you? bathe how do you change your daily activities i mean i'm mm -hmm. thinking a lot of things are affected with you want the best environment for that wound healing you want the best diet you probably want the best hygiene mm -hmm. how do you manage it all well our nurses will have an education with the patients about vitamins and nutrition and hygiene and cleansing and how to care for the wound at home we go over that probably more than the patient wants to hear. We go over and reiterate these things to the patient. You have, you'll leave there with information, packets, everything that you need to know to take care of your wounds. Some patients we do get home health aides to come to the house to help with dressing changes. Some patients do not have the capability or family members that are willing or able to help with their wound care dressing. So we will, we will order home health to come out and provide wound care. Typically they'll come out three times a week. So we'll tailor a wound care plan that works for three times a week dressing changes. Some dressing changes can stay on for the entire week. Some patients, if you're in a specific wrap or, or a cast, you'll have that same dressing on for the entire week. Now, you mentioned bathing. You may have to sponge bathe. You may have to avoid the shower. You may have to have a shower chair to have your legs sticking out or your arms sticking out wherever your wound is. So there is there is that annoyance, but that simply can't be avoided. But we do everything we possibly can to help the patients, whether it's home health aides or information to try to get them from each visit, because it is hard. It's a lot of work to take care of a wound at home. And it's, we only see that patient for an, you know, their visit time once a week. It's, it's up to them to make sure that they're following and taking care of themselves or that they won't progress towards healing. You know, it's, it's interesting hearing you talk about all this because in the pharmacy side, we have patients come in that have high blood pressure, they have diabetes, and we try to give them the confidence to understand the treatment plan a doctor has ordered, you know, to make sure they take that blood pressure medi every day, even though they don't feel like they have high blood pressure, so they don't end up, God forbid, in the hospital because of a cardiac issue. So I'm thinking about how important it is for patients to follow a treatment plan for diabetes or blood pressure in general, 
And then you've got a wound care plan, which is like a whole nother level of being yeah. compliant, I'm guessing. Um, I'm sure it's a long-term process. What tips it, can you give for patients who are maybe under a lot of stress, you know, pandemic or just worried about their wound? How do you help them manage that, that regimen, that anxiety? Your, your wound care visits or your um, home health nurses sound like a real big asset. Yeah. Any other tips for trying to help people cope when they feel like there's no hope to get something healed? Well, some of those patients, we tailor your wound care plan to what's available to you. I'm not going to prescribe you a dressing that needs changed daily or an ointment that needs applied twice a day if it's just simply not feasible for this patient. It's not, why would I prescribe something that I know that's just not possible? So we will tailor your treatment plan to make sure that it's something that's reproducible for you at home. There's more than one way to treat a wound and there's more than one way that's wrong or right. So if one option doesn't work, there's always another option that we can do instead of in replace of to make sure that that patient can execute it because it only works if it's executed properly. So it's, it's not beneficial to the nursing staff, to me or to the patient if we try to do something that's not gonna be able to happen. So we, ha we take everybody's specific needs, medical condition or living environment, where they live into consideration because that makes a big difference on how we decide what we're gonna do to treat you because we have to take everything in play. You know, it makes a huge difference. In, in, in the ulcer, you know, foot ulcers and stuff, uh, I assume we're using antibiotic therapy along with, with all the other um, treatments, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. That's another thing I should mention. A lot of times on your first visit, we'll culture your wound, meaning we'll take a swab from the wound bed and figure out what bacteria is growing, what antibiotic is it susceptible to, what is it resistant to. So that way we know and we can tailor your antibiotic therapy specifically to what's growing in your wound so we know you have the right one. So is there any, any typical uh, uh, bacterial invasion or are they just all across the map? It's honestly all across the map. Most of them, I mean, if I swab the back of your hand right now, I would grow staph, I would grow strep, I would grow all the natural stem, skin flora. So everybody has bacteria, just whether or not it is actively colonizing and infecting that wound bed. So that's a, that's a loaded question. But yes, there's a lot of different, a lot of different bugs that are out there. Well, what, what do I do if you can't heal it? What do I do if we can't heal it? Oh, that's a, that, that, that's, that's a hard question. I mean, is this amputation? Is this, where are we here? Sometimes you know? if the wound is infected deep enough and severely enough, sometimes they do result in amputations, whether it's part of your foot or your toes. And we work with those patients, not only physically, but emotionally too. To, I let them sure. know that it's not, it's not the end of their active life. It's much easier to remove dead and infected bone and maybe lose part of your foot than to allow it to spread. So that is something that we have to watch closely because quality of life is still great with a partial amputation, but I, we can't let it spread proximally up your leg and you, it could be life-threatening. So sometimes sure. an amputation can save your life. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Um... But that's, that's what we try to avoid at the wound center. That's our, that's the main op goal to avoid. We don't want the amputations. We, that's my goal is to heal the wound without, <clears throat> without doing that. But sometimes you are right. It does happen. Hmm. Um, that would be, and of course, would that be because most patients uh, waited too long? It could um, be that they've waited too long. It could be that they have a very infectious organism that caused rapid death to the tissue sure. there's a lot of things that go into play sometimes it's not anybody's fault it just it happens yeah sure hmm. interesting so how do we schedule an initial appointment um like you do not need a referral at the wound center like we said you can we are actually located at the altman main hospital we are on the ground floor you can call the phone number 330 three, six, three, four, nine, seven, seven. And you make an appointment at the Altman's hospitals wound center. If you live closer to Alliance, 
We actually have a wound center at Alliance, Altman Alliance Wound Care Center. That phone number is 330-596-7940. So we have two locations, Altman, Maine, and the one in Alliance as well. Now, do you go between all of them or? I do not. I am only at Altman, Maine, but okay. there's, there we do have some physicians that work at both. Yes. So, so do you have, well, I guess, yeah, I just wanted to, in as we get ready to wrap up here, um, I wondered if you had any takeaways you wanted to share with the listeners for best practices or anything that maybe we didn't cover you're passionate about. If anything, if you can remember anything, I always tell my patients, you may see a problem before you feel the problem. So visual inspection goes a long way. I say that multiple times a day, just look at your feet, look at the bottoms of your feet, put a mirror on the floor, hold your foot above the mirror. If you can't twist your foot to see the bottom, look, have your friends look, have your spouse look, have your family members look. If you see something that's abnormal or you don't know what it is, call us. It's much easier for me to say, oh, that's nothing. It's not a big deal. Rather than I say, why didn't you call me sooner? So just look, visual inspection goes a long way. You may see a problem before you feel the problem. I've always been told that individuals with um, diabetes and, and foot issues to have your toenails trimmed by a podiatrist. Does that follow uh, your roadmap? Yep. We do that here at our office as well. That's a service that is provided. A lot of times these are just routine maintenance type visits that goes along with patients with neuropathy. We just don't want you to create problems. We don't want you to have a wound. We don't want you to cut yourself. We don't want you to have ingrown nails or infections around the nail bed. So a lot of times it's coming in, having that routine procedure done. And a lot of times it's also nice because I'm laying eyes on these patients every three to four months. And I can say, hey, what's going on here? Or, Did you know you have this bruise? Or why is there a rash here? Just little things. It just keeps us active and up to date so we can just visually inspect and monitor our patients well. How about one more time on your phone number? Um, my office here at North Canton is 330-433-1258. If you would like to call the Wound Center at Altman, Maine, it's 330-363-4977. And then Altman Alliance Wound Center is 330-596-7940. Okay, Doc. I would guess that we're about at the end of our, our, our hour here, aren't we, Brad? <laughs> Yeah, we can wrap it up. We appreciate okay. you, Dr. Lascola. Thank you. Well, thank you for very me. much. Thank you very much today, Doctor. We learned a lot. Um, Dr. Natalie Lascola, podiatrist at Altman Medical Group Podiatry and Altman Wound Care. We'd like to remind our listeners if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your healthcare provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Studio Arts and Glass, Genuine Appraisals and Liquidations, as always. We thank our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you again right here next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Okay, well, thanks a bunch for taking time out today yep. for us. Yep, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Doctor. Okay. Have a great day. You too. S stay thanks. well. I will. I'm logging <laughs> off. Got to go see a patient. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs>